Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, tonight's webinar the topic is uh, proximal uh, policy optimization, and it's a technique in uh, deep reinforcement learning uh, that's commonly used. It's one of the more advanced techniques, and uh, it's a little bit difficult to understand the first time through. So hopefully, uh, if you've watched the uh, videos on Udacity and uh, seen an introduction to it, uh, tonight's webinar will uh, just be a reinforcement of that and maybe clarify a, a few items in this uh, in this algorithm. Um, you know, sometimes I'm asked uh, when I'm reviewing uh, projects for this uh, this standard degree um, how they how you might uh, just a second <laughs> Alexa stop sorry about that <laughs> so sometimes I'm asked. Uh, how uh, you might uh, have the algorithm that you're using uh, be more stable because a lot of times it'll learn for a while and it looks like it's doing really well and then maybe just crash and uh, take a long time to recover and then learn learn again. And uh, DDPG and DQN, those other algorithms that you might be more familiar with, often suffer from those stability problems. And PPO is one of the algorithms that can help get past that. So um, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let me pull up the slides here. Okay, so um, proximal policy optimization, uh, commonly referred to as PPO. So the objectives this evening, uh, first of all, to understand a concept of something that's used in PPO, it's called advantage, and it's a, it's a really a uh, uh, a valuation of a state um, and an action in that state uh, is often used in a lot of advanced algorithms and PPO is one of the algorithms that uh, uses that uh, method of optimization or that method of uh, valuing the uh, the value of, a, of an action in the state. So we'll discuss what advantage is and then uh, we'll see how it's used later on in the algorithm itself. Um, so the second objective is really to understand PPO and uh, the main the really basis of PPO is really looking at two different policies. Uh, so there's a current policy, the one that you're you're actually learning, and then there's a baseline policy that's an earlier version of a policy uh, that was obtained from some experience that you gained earlier in, in training. And uh, we'll use those two different policies. Uh, the comparison, the ratio between those two is a part of the optimization that, that's performed here. So let's talk about uh, this term advantage. So uh, you're already familiar with Q values, uh, uh, the Q value of, of an action in a particular state and, and also the state value, the V uh, value for a state. Well, advantage is just uh, the difference between those two. Um, you can think of the, the V uh, state value as kind of the average of all the Q values in that state. If you took all the different actions you could, you could take in that state and estimated the Q values for every one of those actions, and average them, that's kind of a good approximation for the, the V value. So you can think of advantage as being uh, for a particular action in that state, how not, not just what is this actual uh, value, but how is this value different from the average value in that state? So you know, if one particular action is really good in a state, um, uh, much higher than the average, then that would give you more advantage if all of the uh, the actions are kind of equal in a state, then there's um, less likely to be much of an advantage of choosing any particular one. So uh, this is just a, uh, a, a different uh, valuation for a particular action in a state. And, and as I said, it's used in a lot of different algorithms. Uh, PPO is one of those. Uh, A3C, another one that uh, is, is talked about in, in this course, is, uh, is another one. Uh, you'll see it used a lot in some of the more advanced algorithms. So uh, before we actually talk about PPO, let's talk about why we want to do something like PPO. What's the motivation for using PPO? So um, you know the Q value or the advantage function. Uh, as you know, it's a, it's a com complex, uh, multidimensional function. Uh, it's difficult to visualize. Uh, but as always, you know, we kind of fall back to a visualization of a, of a multidimensional function like this in, in three dimensions. And, uh, here's an example of, uh, of a little hill that has a, a pathway going up the hill. And uh, you can kind of think of, uh, of uh, stochastic gradient descent as, uh, you know, at each point where you're at on this hill, finding the direction that you want to go that would most optimize your uh, direction to uh, move up towards the top of the hill. Well, if it was 
these tend to be towards the bottom, but we're we're talking about deep reinforcement learning here. So typically we talk about uh, gradient ascent instead of descent. But um, as you can see, sometimes um, the multidimensional nature of the of the state space that you're in, it it can be pretty convoluted. And if you want to really make sure that you you know keep taking small steps towards the goal, you have to take really tiny steps, and that can take a very long time to converge and a long time to learn. Uh, and if you take larger steps, uh, as you can see here in this example, uh, you could end up taking a step that takes you off that cliff that you see there, and in result of negative learning, and maybe take a long time to recover from that bad uh, step that you took. So uh, PPO, the motivation behind PPO, is to try to get a feel for what the train looks like around where I'm at right right now in this uh, in this gradient descent. And you know, if the train is uh, fairly flat and I can uh, move quite a long distance without making a mistake, then uh, I can take larger steps. But if the train is uh, you know kind of like uh, with a lot of cliffs and a lot of uh, hazards nearby, then I, wanted, I would, would want to take smaller steps towards the goal. So uh, the PPO formulation is just a way uh, to help you determine what step size is appropriate and to limit step sizes in cases where maybe it's not appropriate to take a big step. So with that, uh, let's actually get into the uh, algorithm itself. So as I mentioned early on, um, we have uh, the concept of two different policy networks. You know, usually we're just working with one policy. Um, and here we, we start with that policy, the one we're really trying to refine. But then we, we look at a previous policy that we had uh, at some time in the past. And that was, you know, established after we collected some experience samples uh, uh, through a particular trajectory uh, in the past. And we want to, as we're optimizing our current policy, we want to look at that what that old policy looked like. Uh, and and not really deviate too much from that policy. We want to kind of like take steps that are, uh, are reasonably close to the previous policies so that we incrementally uh, develop new policies without rap, uh, radical changes. So to do that, we're going to start by uh, defining this uh, uh, this value RT of theta. And you know, as you recall, theta here is just uh, all the weights of your neural network typically for deep reinforcement learning. And so uh, this ratio is just the ratio of the policy that we're refining. Uh, compared to uh, the previous policy that we had established earlier. Then the, the key part of PPO, and I should mention there's a couple different versions of it. The version I'm talking about tonight is called the clipped objective function uh, because it's based on, on this objective function that you see here. Uh, and so the, the, the key thing is that we're going we're gonna to take uh, a new objective function for uh, performing gradient ascent. And this objective function uh, is built to limit how much you would deviate from uh, a previous policy that you had. So uh, as you can see in the inner term there, the summation, uh, you're going to take the minimum of two different values. One is uh, the actual ratio uh, of the policies that we talked about earlier times the advantage. Uh, if that's uh, uh, reasonably small, we'll, we'll use that value. But if we deviate too far from that, uh, then we will clip that uh, value to a certain value. and. Uh, there's a concept of an epsilon uh, hyperparameter here. Uh, epsilon in the original PPO paper was set to 0.2, but uh, that's one of the, the values that you can vary as you're experimenting with your uh, with your networks. Um, so uh, this uh, epsilon value um, is uh, typically something small like 0.2, and you were, you will clip the uh, the ratio and the and the uh, advantage to something uh, between one minus epsilon and one plus epsilon. And not exceed those those values, uh, uh, the advantage at those values. Uh, that sounds a little confusing, so uh, let's take a look at a uh, a figure here, which hopefully will make it more clear. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's two different graphs here. Uh, one is for when advantage is positive uh, on the left, and one where advantage is negative on the right. And uh, let's talk first about uh, a positive advantage. So. Uh, as you can see at the 1.0 value where the little red dot is there, uh, that's the point where uh, where the uh, the advantage function uh, is is the same as what you would uh, have normally for just just using advantage. And if the ratio that you you're using uh, for your two policies uh, have to exceed one plus epsilon, in this case 1.2 times the advantage, uh, if it ever gets higher than that, uh, then you would clip it at what the advantage was at that point uh, in the curve and never exceed that. 
and uh, likewise on the right when an advantage is less than zero uh, the same thing happens as you as you approach from the right the uh, one minus epsilon uh, if the advantage ever gets more than the advantage would have been at that value it gets clipped at that uh, value of, of advantage and so by, by doing this uh, it, it essentially uh, just lets you take large steps when you're uh, not uh, when your current policy is not too much different from your your previous version of a, of a policy uh, but then uh, if if you get too much of a deviation between those two and start to see a big change in advantage from uh, one uh, one version of a policy to the compared to the previous it, it limits uh, how much of that advantage you're gonna you, you're gonna uh, take into consideration in your in your algorithm so uh, really uh, that's all. Uh, that's all that uh, the algorithm is based on. Um, it, it's kind of a complex algorithm. It's a complex looking algorithm, but in implementation is actually fairly simple. Um, here is the uh, eight or nine uh, steps of the algorithm itself. Um, you start with a couple of, uh, of initial parameters. Uh, as always, uh, all the parameters stay to zero for the initial values of all the weights of the neural network, and the, uh, the value of epsilon that you want to choose for your clipping threshold. And then uh, for any of the, uh, the the k from zero one and so on, uh, that that each one of those different k values is a different policy that you're working on. So uh, this k zero is the initial policy. K one is the uh, the next policy. And so for each, for each one of these, we're going to go collect a uh, a set of partial trajectories uh, following that policy, and then estimate uh, advantage uh, for that policy uh, using a, a advantage estimation algorithm, and then uh, compute the policy update, and uh, that's uh, using that clipped objective function we talked about. Uh, and uh, again, you use traditional uh, steps, uh, mini batches of uh, stochastic gradient descent. The PPL algorithm used uh, an atom optimization, which is you know very commonly used. Uh, you see that that's probably the most common optimization technique used uh, in in all of, of uh, the kinds of neural networks we use here in, in uh, deep reinforcement learning. And that's essentially it. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, I hope uh, you have a better understanding of, uh, of what PPO is and uh, how it works. Uh, again, just as a, a summary review, we uh, tonight talked about what the advantage function is, uh, how it's really an estimate of how a particular action in the state uh, varies compared to the average uh, action uh, value, Q value in that state. And uh, developed a ratio of uh, the uh, current policy compared to a previous policy that we had, and then uh, clip the uh, the objective function clips that uh, that ratio, that advantage for uh, calculated advantage uh, at that ratio, so that you will limit uh, the amount of uh, deviation you would have from from uh, uh, one policy to the next as you're as you're learning the the, the new policies. So that's uh that's uh, really all we had to say to this evening. Um, Kind of a, a short lecture, but uh, hopefully it gave you an introduction to what PPO is and how it works um, and how it uh, can help optimize and stabilize uh, some of the, the algorithms that you use in deep reinforcement learning. And as always, uh, following uh, this evening's webinar, if you're listening live, uh, you can tune into the Slack channel and, and we'll have a Ask Me Anything event in uh, the next half hour or so. Uh, I'll be there uh, to answer your questions uh, if you have any live. Uh, until next week, uh, that's all we had to say. Bye.